starring Maureen O'Hara as one from the new breed of the old Talking movies. Maureen O'Hara, Western movies. Anyone who knows classic Western movies knows who Maureen O'Hara is. For those who don't know, O'Hara was a woman in a man's world who was able to hold her own. Today we will take a look at her Western movies where she played alongside some of the genre's greats. If you like this video, take a look at my channel for many more. The link is in the description. Apologies for any mispronunciations of names. For those who watch till the end, I have something for you. Now let's get started. With Buffalo Bill, a fictional account of the life of William F. Buffalo Bill Cody, a hunter and army scout. In the early part of his life, he rescues a US Senator and his daughter, Louisa Frederici. Eventually she becomes his devoted wife. Cody is betrayed as someone who admires and respects the Indians and is a good friend of Yellowhand, who will eventually become chief of the Cheyenne. Everyone else, on the other hand, hates the Indians and are prepared to trample on their lands and destroy their buffalo hunting grounds. He's eventually forced to fight the Cheyenne, however. He also meets a writer, Ned Buntline, who writes about Cody's exploits and he becomes a sensation when he travels east. When he attacks those in position of authority over their maltreatment of the Native American population, he comes under attack. Along with his wife, he eventually established his Wild West show that became an international sensation. Comanche Territory. Silver has been found on Comanche Territory and the government accomplished a peaceful agreement with the Indians. When James Jim Bowie come into the scene, he finds the white settlers living nearby, planning to attack the Indians, although they have known about the agreement, and the beautiful Kate, Maureen O'Hara, seems to play a leading role in this intrigue. Jim Bowie came to talk peace with the Comanche, but at every turn he was balked by the woman whose beauty... My son... Rio Grande takes place after the Civil War, when the Union turned their attentions towards the Apaches. Union officer Kirby York, John Wayne, is in charge of an outpost on the Rio Grande, in which he is in charge of training new recruits, one of which is his son, whom he hasn't seen in 15 years. He whips him into shape and takes on the Apaches, but not before his mother shows up and takes him out of there. The decision to leave is left up to Trooper York, who decides to stay and fight. Through it all, Kirby and Kathleen, Maureen O'Hara, those separated for years, fall back in love and decide that it's time to give it another try. But York faces his toughest battle when his unorthodox plan to outwit the elusive Apaches leads to a possible court-martial. Locked in a bloody Indian war, he must fight to redeem his honour and save the love and lives of his broken family. Kangaroo. In 1900 Australia, Del Maguire, Maureen O'Hara, worried about her missing father, Michael, she asked Trooper Len for help. Michael is drunk in Sydney, staying at a boarding house. He meets Richard Connor, Peter Lawford, a desperate young man trying to find the money to return home to America. Michael is looking for his long-lost son, Dennis, whom Maguire had abandoned to an orphanage as a child, a deed for which he blames himself. Connor attempts to rob John Campbell, Richard Boone, outside a gambling house, but finds him to be equally broke. He is talked into assisting him in robbing the establishment, during which the owner is shot. Of what it means that the ghost you thought yourself rid of is back again to plague you. Don't point the gun at him. His deception is no worse than yours. The Redhead from Wyoming. In Wyoming Territory, a range war is brewing between entrenched cattle barons and new settlers. Cattle King Reese Duncan is opposed by ambitious gambler Jim Averill, who imports his old flame, shapely saloon queen Kate Maxwell, Maureen O'Hara, and sets her up as an alternative cattle buyer. As matters build towards violence, Kate finds she's being taken advantage of, but her only potential ally in staving off carnage is seemingly mild-mannered sheriff Stan Blame, who distrusts her. War Arrow Major Howell Brady and two non-coms are assigned to go to Indian Territory and recruit peaceful Seminoles relocated from Florida to aid the army in fighting the larger, rampaging Kiowa tribe. 
Brady, Jeff Chandler, promises them better land than the subsistence reservation they have been assigned to. Magro, their chief, although initially reluctant, finally agrees for the good of his people. However, Brady's superior, Colonel Jackson Meade, is hostile to the idea and distrusts having Indians as allies. Beautiful widow, Elaine Corwin, Maureen O'Hara, proves a pleasant distraction for Brady, although her husband, an unrepentant Confederate whose body was never found, may still be alive and leading the savage Kiowas against the hated Yankees. The Deadly Companions After her son is killed in a bank robbery, the widowed dance hall hostess, Kit Tilden, Maureen O'Hara, is determined to bury him beside his father in Syringo, now deserted and located in Apache Territory, Yellowleg Brian Keith, the ex-Army Northern Sergeant who accidentally killed her son, decides to help take the body across the desert to be buried, whether Kit wants help or not. He forces the other two bank robbers, Turk, a Confederate deserter, and Billy, a gunslinger, to accompany them. McClintock George Washington McClintock, GW, to his friends and foes alike, a cattle baron and the richest man in the territory. He anxiously awaits the return of his daughter, Becky, who has been away at school for the last two years. He's also surprised to see that his wife, Catherine, Maureen O'Hara, has also returned. She had left him some years before without really explaining what he had done, but she does make the point of saying that she's returned, to take her daughter back to the state capital with her. GW is highly respected by everyone around him, including the farmers who are pouring into the territories with free grants of land, and the Indians who are under threat of being relocated to another reservation. Between his wife, his headstrong daughter, the crooked land agent, and the thieving government Indian agent, GW tries to keep the peace and do what is best for everyone. The Rare Breed When her husband dies en route to America, Martha Price, Maureen O'Hara, and her daughter, Hillary, are left to carry his dream, the introduction of Hereford cattle into the American West, a result of years of European breeding, named Vindicator. Vindicator exhibits all the gentility of breeding, including an odd willingness to follow Hillary merely at the whistle of God Save the Queen. They enlist Sam Bulldog Burnett in their efforts to transport Vindicator to a breeder in Texas, but the trail is fraught with danger and even Burnett doubts the survival potential of this rare breed of cattle. A man is dead. All because of your... Big Jake. McCandle's ranch is overrun by a gang of cutthroats led by the evil John Fane. They kidnap little Jacob McCandle's and hold him for $1 million ransom. There is only one man brave enough, tough enough and smart enough to bring him back alive and that man is Big Jake. Martha, Maureen O'Hara, places the ransom in a strong box, and delegates from both the United States Army and the Texas Rangers offer to take the box for her. Martha decides, instead, to send for her estranged husband, Jacob, Big Jake, McCandles, who wanders the West as a gunfighter. Jake arrives and they confer in secret about what to do with the box. Oh, okay, so you're still here. Yes, I did promise something extra for you guys who stayed watching. Here are some images of Maureen over the years. Thank you for your time today, I hope you enjoyed the video. I appreciate likes, shares and subscribers. Make sure you hit the notification button to get my new videos. Bye for now, see you again soon.